March 11th, 2020. Something that we just continue to, to try to wait for to get information. But the both teams have gone back to the locker room. Utah is no longer on the floor. The Thunder are no longer on its bench. The officials have gone back to the locker room. The fans here in the arena don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. And so as soon as we get any kind of information, we will certainly pass it along. Ready the for the game playoffs. tonight has been postponed. You are all safe. And take your time in leaving the arena tonight and do so in an orderly fashion. Thank you for coming out tonight. One year later. Yo, welcome back to another episode of Carolina Sports Talk. It's your man, Big Cliff. As always, you can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever your podcasts are available. Make sure to hit us up on the Carolina Sports Talk line, cliff at carolinasportstalk.net, and follow us on Instagram at Carolina Sports Talk. The announcer, as they were leaving the gym, said, you're all safe. When in reality, we know that that was a lie. The last year has been a tumultuous time for our country, for each of us with the loss of life, over 500,000 lives lost. Um, It's been a time period that a lot of us have learned a lot about ourselves, a lot about our thoughts, our, our desires. We learned how to love some of us. We learned how really who we are and what we're made of. Um, Carolina sports talk is proud to reflect on the last year and just to experience what is its effect has really had on us from March 11th, 2020, when that regular season match between the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder was postponed. Rudy Gobert ruled out earlier after a positive test for the coronavirus. And immediately the NBA deciding to pause the season um, until they got a notification later. It it was something that we all kind of took for a joke at first, the same way that Rudy Galbert took it for a joke and was touching all over the microphones and just the uncertainty that we all had at that point on what it really was. Uh, The next major sports to be affected by the coronavirus was on March 12th. The NHL uh, followed by delaying their season. Uh, MLB suspended spring training. Um, saying that they would postpone the 2020 season for at least two weeks. But again, with that lack of knowledge, everybody was just not sure what was to come. Major Major League Soccer, even with their season 30 days away, they postponed. Vince McMahon's professional football league, the XFL, ended its first season prematurely. They played only five weeks on a 10-week schedule. And on March 12th, that concluded. University conferences all across the country, the basketball tournaments, tournament conferences were canceled. Players pulled off the courts during warm-ups. Um, even one game stopping before it finished. It had actually already started. Later that same day on March 12th, the NCAA tournament was canceled. The men and the women's. The cancel cost the NCAA $2.5 billion in revenue. A year ago, it was at that moment that Big Cliff realized for them to give up that kind of money, it, it had to be serious. And yet still, even then, I didn't understand it, the severity of what was to come. On March the 13th, 2020, the PGA canceled the Players' Championship and all tour events for the next couple of weeks. NASCAR stated that they would postpone eight regular season races with everything coming up moving forward with the pandemic. On March 16th, the NFL's uh, legal tampering period began, but it wasn't quite the same. It was an informal, what was supposed to be the informal start for free agency was just the loom of what was around the corner. On March 20th, some semblance of a regular season, Tom Brady uh, announced that he was going to Tampa Bay. Who knew on March 20th, 2020, 420, 2020, 
that Mr. Tom Brady's announcement would lead them to their very next Super Bowl, not a year later. On March the 24th, the 2020 Summer Olympics to be held in Tokyo, Japan, were postponed until 2021. Uh, There were several individuals who lost their opportunities, athletes who had been training for years, training for an opportunity that some may never, ever get the opportunity to see again. April 3rd, 2020, the WNBA delayed the start of their season indefinitely, although they still at that moment planned to have a draft on April 17th. On April 4th, it was originally scheduled to take place at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Tampa Bay, Florida, but the WWE hosted WrestleMania 36 at a fanless Orlando WWE Performance Center. On April 9th, the PGA announced that it had postponed the Masters Tournament until November. On April 10th, the XFL announced that it had stopped operation and dismissed all of their players and all of their employees. Now, it has been purchased since then by Dwayne Rock Johnson, uh, and it is set to reopen in 2022. Now, as I reflect and just sit and think about that time period without sports, a nation really just ravaged with this infection, this disease, this this virus. I miss sports, y'all. <laughs> I didn't realize the part and and what role watching Sports Center played in my life to how much I just really took for granted coming home after a long day's work and being able to watch some basketball, being able to anticipate football being able to think about the baseball games that were just going to come and just sports as a general, even watching the hockey highlights sometimes and tennis and golf and just every aspect of the competition of the sportsmanship of the camaraderie. I missed sports y'all. I got to a point where I couldn't even watch ESPN anymore because every day it was a rerun of something else. And it just felt lonely. It was like you got that best friend that you talk to every day and then, one day they move away and you don't get to talk to them anymore. Now, I know we got cell phones and all that, but that's neither here nor there. Just go with my analogy. It just really felt like there was a hole that was really missing something. And then we all got just a little taste of what it used to be like. There was something that we could wholly just consume together. And that's when on April the 19th, 2020, ESPN pre- premiered the first of a 10-part document documentary Y'all know the word. They premiered a, the first of a 10-part documentary series, The Last Dance, which recorded the career of NBA legend Michael Jordan. The series was originally scheduled to debut in June, but they moved it up knowing that we were thirsty, we were hungry, and in true form, we consumed it. We learned more about Michael. We felt connected to sports, and although it was a memory, although it was a thought that we had had before, it was sports again. To be able to delve deeply, I mean, my entire social media was enveloped in the last dance because it was what? The return of sports for us. Not long after that debut, we had another taste of what was to come. And on April 23rd, the 2020 NBA, excuse me, NFL draft was held virtually with Roger Goodell announcing the picks from his home. Cincinnati Bengals at that point selected the LSU quarterback Joe Burrow with the first overall pick. As I sat and just reflected and thought about that draft, I personally liked the flow of it. I liked the way that it just seemed like it was much more authentic and like it was more real than anything else had been. It was partly because I had longed and been hurt the hungry and thirsty for this connection to sports. So we were just excited to have anything back, but it gave an opportunity to see, Everybody in their homes. We know that during the NFL draft, there are some and several players who choose to be with their loved ones and family members. And that's dope. I mean, it's cool. We got an opportunity to see everybody in that light this time because everybody was being home. It was an opportunity for us to peek out of our windows of being in our quarantine zones, whether it be at home or with family or wherever we were, and to actually see some side of normalcy, to see other people. During that time of isolation, there were so many people across this country that were just hungry for that connection. And although being virtually, it was just a placation that allowed us to really feel like we were still a part of something bigger than just sitting in our homes. 
at that point, a lot of us had only begun to really realize what this was, but we still had so many questions with not knowing when the pandemic the pandemic would end, when we were going to be able to be safe to see our family, when we were going to be able to start traveling again. We just didn't know so much at that point, but there was yet still more to come. The date, May the 9th, 2020. The UFC hosted UFC 249 in Jacksonville, Florida. It was the first major sporting event to resume resume after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. No fans in attendance, but they hosted an event. It was the first time that we had live action sports again in months. For me, it seemed like an opportunity to feel like, oh man, we might actually be getting through this. We may be possibly beginning to get to a point where this might be over soon. Even on May the 17th, watching the first NASCAR race at the Darlington Motor Speedway in Darlington, South Carolina. I said, oh, man, they got big old events going on in my state. They got it. We're here. The pandemic is almost over. We're almost through with this. Even when on June the 4th, 2020, the NBA and its Players Association approved the team, the different team, 22 team restart in Orlando in late July, a neutral site hosted by the entire NBA and uh, would be the site of the NBA playoffs later to be known later to be known as the NBA bubble. It seemed like, hey, if sports are coming back, everything is going to be all right. We're getting ready to go back to some some sense of normalcy. On June 11th, 2020, the PGA returned to action after 89 days of rest and they returned to the Charles Schwab Challenge in Fort Worth, Texas. The event was won by Daryl, excuse me, Daniel Berger. Everything was finally starting to come to to come to some type of return after Hungary and being thirsty for sports. We're finally getting it, y'all. June fifteenth, the WNBA announced that they were going to have their own bubble, as some would call it, the Wubble, um, and be, they would also begin in late July at the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Finally, MLB owners. After failing to negotiate with the Players Association, they chose to host a 60-game season starting in late July. July 27th, the National Women's Soccer League kicked off the Utah Cup Challenge Tournament, which was a revival of team sports in the United States. It was the first time that we were actually able to get some new sports going on. And we thought, here we go. It's almost done. Y'all, for me, it's this this time period became a little bit more personal as I was just kind of excited for everything going on. I made a mistake and I went into a gas station without my mask on and I contracted COVID-19. It messed me up, landed me in the hospital, in the ICU, and I thought that I was going to die. In an ICU bed, they turned on sports. It's almost like if they knew who I was. And on July 8th, laying in a hospital bed, I listened to the sounds of the major league soccer with the started with their start back tournament. The MLS is back. Uh, they held it at the ESPN wild world, wild wide world of sports complex in a one month tournament that was actually won by the Portland Timbers. Um, but throughout that time, several players did in fact test positive for the coronavirus. As a survivor of the virus, I can tell you that, in that moment, laying in my hospital bed, sports was my one of my connections to my life. In that moment that I thought I was gone, it was one of the things that I held on to to pull me back. Of course, family, faith, all of the great things, of course, but sports was there. To be able to listen to that and to see these athletes, these professionals, these humans, Connecting to one another, connecting to all of us across the country who were hurting, people whose family members had died, those of us who are survivors who were lucky enough to have had that hurt, had that pain, had that experience, and yet still be alive to celebrate us, to celebrate all of the frontline workers who put their lives at risk daily to take care of their neighbors, to take care of strangers, to take care of people in their cities, to just put everything on the line for others. These athletes went out and put their talents on display just to entertain us, to allow us to have some semblance of normalcy, to have us have that opportunity to return to something that we love so much, the sports that are the backbone of this country. It gave people hope. 
sports gave us something to root for. On July 23rd, 2020, the Washington Nationals faced the New York Yankees in the first match of the 2020 MLB season. The first pitch thrown out by Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. The face to many people of the pandemic was the first pitch thrower. Um, it just meant a lot at that point to see somebody who knew and understand and for him to kind of be there and felt it made it feel like it was okay. Made it feel like it was okay to start back. It was okay to start moving forward. And I, and I really believe in that moment, it's what we as a country needed. The next day on the 24th games tip for the WNBA bubble. And on the 30th of July, the seed game begins with the NBA bubble at the Walt Disney world's ESPN wild world of sports complex. August 1st, 2020, the NHL started off their season uh, with a qualifying round and then a round robin play at the same time prior to the start of the NFL, excuse me, of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Now, we also know that in the midst of our country trying to restart with everything still being shaky, with there being so much quarantine and so much isolation, there was a lot of turmoil as well. On August the 26th, 2020, an unarmed black man named Jacob Blake was shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin. As a result, the Milwaukee Bucks protest their first round match against the Orlando Magic. In a semblance and just very similar to how sports began to be that hope, it also became a reflection. To see their brothers and their sisters being shot and killed to see so many of us being harassed in the streets. The players said enough was enough. They used their platform. They used their fame and they threatened people with their money to bring attention to it. The WNBA, the MLS, MLB teams, and other NBA teams, they followed with walking out. The very same hope that they began to give us back with the return of sports, they used to enlighten us. They used in an opportunity to allow us to see the things that some of us don't want to see. It's not okay to shoot people because they're black. Our lives mean do not mean less because you say it does, because you don't have that respect. The rest of the bubble is at a loss. And the entire NBA chooses to continue the playoffs only after a few days. Conversations are established. Conversations begin. Ears have to listen. Mouths speak and to a level that has never been reached at a national level before. We can debate the effects and or whether or not some may believe it works. We can say what we want, but at the end of the day, Black Lives Matter. And that message was carried out. Later on in the year, September 10th, 2020, the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs in front of a limited number of fans defeat the Houston Texans 34 to 20 in the first match of the 2020 NFL season. We got football back, y'all. It's at that moment that things started to seem kind of OK. We know that even now in March of 2021, we're not out of the woods. We haven't yet gotten to a point where this pandemic is over, but through the actions of so many throughout the time and the awareness that was able to be brought through and brought forth by sports, we began to get some sense of normalcy, some semblance of what is supposed to be our world, our country, our environment. On October the 6th, 2020, the Seattle storm complete the sweep of the Las Vegas aces to win the WNBA title. After two initial positive tests during the quarantine period, the WNBA bubble ends without any additional COVID-19 cases. A few days later, on October the first, excuse me, October the 11th, 2020, the Los Angeles Lakers defeat the Miami Heat in six games to win the 2020 NBA Finals. The Lakers championship marks the fourth of loss, excuse me, of LeBron James's career, and the NBA bubble ends without one positive COVID-19 test. The same couldn't be said for the Major League Soccer. 
Although they were able to complete their 2020 season on December 12th with the Columbus crew defeating the Seattle Sounders, they lost 20% of the league players during the season due to the coronavirus. On December 22nd, 2020, the NBA began its regular season with games in the home arenas. Some of the teams were even able to host fans in their home arenas. Each team was scheduled to play 72 games using the COVID-19 protocol. Just a few short weeks later, on January the 11th, 2020, Alabama defeated the Ohio State University 52-24 in the college football playoff championship game. Throughout the course of the NCAA football season, some games were canceled or postponed for players and coaches who tested positive for the coronavirus. But they finished college football, y'all. On February 7th, another season was able to finish with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeating the Kansas City Chiefs 31-9 to with the game taking place in the Buccaneers' home stadium. Now, y'all know how we feel about football over here at Carolina Sports Talk. And make sure you hit us up on the Carolina Sports Talk line, cliff at carolinasportstalk.net. But football allowed us to have the most close effect that we could have to reality, to a normal sense. And although February was just literally last month, it feels like there's so much more that we have left to go and so far that we've come from, that we just got to take a pause and take a moment to reflect on what sports have meant to us during this pandemic. Even as the NBA hosted on March the 7th, the All-Star Weekend in Atlanta, there were some who were still torn with regards to whether or not they should even have All-Star Weekend. It's been a full year, yes, but there's so much more left to do. With the rise of the vaccine and with the rise of people becoming vaccinated, uh, even with some of the vaccinated healthcare professionals being allowed to attend the All-Star game as a whole, it's important that we all do our part to make sure that this pandemic ends. We've lost so many people from the sports world, from entertainment, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, on our jobs. As we reflect Let's do our part to move forward from this pandemic. Sports allow us that opportunity to draw closer, to come together, to root for something that's bigger than us. Somebody who is a, has amazing talent or teams that have been there because they've been the teams of our fathers and grandfathers and uncles and aunts and moms and sisters. It gives us an opportunity to draw closer to one another and root for the good old team. Or as baseball says, root, root, root for the home team. We're almost there, you guys. One year later from the shutdown, sports has played an integral part in allowing this country to rebound, allowing this country to come forward and move forward in our lives and begin to be who we are going to be for the rest of our lives. Let's do our part. Let's wear our masks. Let's get vaccinated. It's your boy, Big Cliff. I appreciate you for tuning in. We got a surprise for you before the next show, and so stay tuned to the socials. Make sure you hit us up at cliff at carolinasportstalk.net and just wherever you get your podcasts because Carolina Sports Talk has a little surprise for you. Once again, it's your man, Big Cliff. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Welcome to That's My Biz, featuring two fly moms who are about their biz. Join me, Pamela, and my homegirl, Ginger, as we share the crazy ins and outs of juggling life, motherhood, relationships, entrepreneurship, and all that in between. Make sure to check in with us every Tuesday for a new episode and follow on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a beat.